Okay, so this trip, of course, was not nearly on the same scale as the previous one, but I still managed to cover a lot of ground and almost 5,000 miles. So um, I basically needed to make it to St. Louis. And after St. Louis, I was free to take my time to get back to New Jersey. Um, so the first day, covered almost the whole of the state of Pennsylvania and even though I thought it was going to be just like riding a bicycle and um, you know you just hit the road and everything that you learned and discovered kind of comes back to you it does but it takes time so the first day was full of little snags and um, I kept on getting to places late and not having enough time to do what I wanted to do and being even more late getting to the next thing um, that I planned to do and also it's October so it gets dark pretty early but I still managed to make the best of it so the first thing that I wanted to do uh, while driving into Pennsylvania is to go visit Three Mile Island and that's where the worst nuclear accident in the US history took place when there was a leak of radioactive gas from a power plant so, of course, you cannot go into the plant itself, but there was supposed to be a marker um, across the river from the Three Mile Island on which the plant stands. So I didn't find the marker, and you can even barely see the stacks of the plant um, in between the trees, but there was a great farmer's market there, and it's amazing how delicious and cheap things are when you buy them almost straight from the field. And then, of course, driving through rural Pennsylvania, it's beautiful, especially in October. And my next stop was Gettysburg. Yes, the place where the decisive battle of the American Civil War took place. And you don't realize how huge it is and what scale of, of the battle it was until you actually get there and you see the place. I mean, um, it lasted for three days. There were close to 200,000 soldiers from both sides. About 50,000 soldiers were killed between 3,000 and 5,000 horses. I mean, it was just a meat grinder. Um, so I wanted to take one of the tours offered by the park rangers. And of course I was late to it. So I just walked around and took some pictures and tried to absorb the scale of the whole thing and then of course the memorial to Lincoln and his famous Gettysburg address and then driving again through the beautiful rural Pennsylvania with the forests and the hills and the mountains with the fall foliage and the beautiful quaint little towns I was getting to my last destination of the day which is in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and that's the site of the memorial for United Airlines Flight 93 that crashed there on 9-11 when the passengers and crew tried to take control back from the hijackers. Um, and it's very easy to visit the memorials in Manhattan and even the one in the Pentagon. But Shanksville is so out of the way, hardly anyone makes it there. And I really wanted to go precisely there. Um, so I wanted to do it on my last trip and it didn't work out because it's just so out of the way, all the way in the southwestern corner of Pennsylvania. And um, on this trip, I was determined to make up for it. So I got there, it was actually a little bit past sunset and it was completely empty. I was the only person there. Um, the memorial is huge and it consists of a few parts. Um, one of them is the actual field where the plane went down. There is a boulder that marks the impact site and um, there are benches along the field where you can just sit down and contemplate whatever went there. And there's also something called the wall of names with the names of all 40 passengers and crew. And then a short drive around it, there is the memorial building itself, which is huge and so impressively 
um, conceived and designed and done. So there is a walkway um, that leads inside the memorial itself with a timeline of every plane that hit for first the World Trade Center and then the Pentagon. And then as you walk around the path, um, you get inside the memorial itself, which is like sort of a concrete um, labyrinth sort of thing. And um, at the end of the walkway, you come to this little observation deck that kind of juts out from it, like a bridge of the ship. And um, um, from the hill, it overlooks the field. Um, where the plane went down and there's a very touching um, inscription a common field one day a field of honor forever um, so again it was beautiful um, it was very very special being there you know after dark and being the only person there um, and as I was walking away um, I turned the corner and there was a family of deer and I don't know which one of us got spooked more because uh, I screamed and they made a noise and, and they ran off and I went to my car and as you drive away there is the third part of the memorial something called um, the Tower of Voices which is this huge tower with wind chimes inside and um, also um, for the number of passengers and crew. And um, this is the sound that it makes when the wind is blowing. So overall, it was very memorable and very special experience. And if you're ever in that area, I highly, highly recommend visiting the Flight 93.